So, Henry the Green Engine, the number three engine of the North Western Railway. Henry has been there since the beginning. He was introduced in the third story of the first railway series book and in the third episode of the first season of the television series. Now Henry is the fan favourite character. He always has been. He has got some of the best episodes in the show, like the Flying Kipper and even Henry's Forest. He has even got the story that most people would call their favourite, which is Super Rescue. If you are younger than 11 or 10, you might be wondering, what's so special about this engine? Well, being one of the first engines to be ever introduced, he has had one of the most character development in the railway series and the TV series. I mean, he used to be an engine who couldn't run properly and who would cause many problems and then went on to become such a character but if you got a small cameo in a 22 minute special, fans would get excited. So let's take a look into the history of Henry the Green Engine. There are many theories to how Henry came to be who he was originally. Henry's origins are highly unknown. The story goes that he was built from drawings stolen from Sir Nigel Gresley at Doncaster about 1919 by an unknown locomotive builder who held a grudge against him and desired to steal his plans. His spy, however, bought the wrong drawing. They were for an experimental engine that were to go on and become the well-known A1 Pacifics. The thief realized his mistake too late and Henry was built with many resulting flaws and he seemingly looked like a mixture between a C1 Atlantic and an A1. Coming to Sodor, the fat controller was starting to get desperate for engines, so he decided to go the third party shady route and bought Henry. And to no surprise, Henry didn't perform well, he was also very vain, got shut up in a tunnel because he stopped in it just so his paint wouldn't get dirty. That was until Gordon burst his safety valve and couldn't pull the- Oh, oh alright, story time is over. Some of us have to get some sleep. Alright, alright. However, after getting released from the tunnel, the fat controller painted Henry blue. Here's where we get one of the known problems. Henry's paint. Henry having been painted blue often caused a lot of confusion within the children who read the book. Because he was partially based on a Gresley design, painting him blue made him look very similar to Gordon. And once he got the square buffers, kids became even more confused. So to counter this, Wilbur repainted Henry again in the Troublesome Engines book. But this was not just the only problem. Henry was also often confused by the illustrator, as C. Reginald Dalby would often have his wheel arrangement different. Even William Middleton, who was the original illustrator, did these mistakes. If that wasn't bad enough, it was said and shown in the stories how Henry was a very bad steamer. He wouldn't be able to make steam properly and would always get tired very quickly. These were shown in stories like Thomas's Train and Thomas and the Guard. So from being stuck in a tunnel to being painted blue to elephant humiliation to being on strike for not shunting coaches. Tender engines don't shunt. So after all of that, Audrey had actually thought about scrapping Henry and replacing him with a new engine. I mean, a character having so many flaws, due to which it became hard to write for it, would be a difficult task. But instead of scrapping Henry, Wilbur decided to give him a last try with the book Henry the Green Engine. There, Henry finally gets to be the useful engine he had tried hard to be. The fat controller decides to buy him Welsh coal on which he now runs. So happy endings? Not quite. Because one of the problems might have been solved, but what about its design? He was still an unofficial design, so he was still sometimes illustrated wrong. So how to change that? Simple. Give him an overhaul. As everyone knows, on that one wintry night when Henry pulled the flying kipper for the first time, what had happened? After seeing that this would be his last final break, he would be able to prove himself to just seeing his world crashing down on him. What do you think happened after that? Was Henry finally scrapped? 
Well, who wasn't? Because since the crew and Stania, who was close friends of Topham, rebuilt him into an official design, a seemingly mixture between an element of Black 5 and a Jubilee class. This raises a few questions though. Like, how could you take a crude engine and then rebuild him? Or how could you even take a Grizzly design and rebuild him into a Stania class? In the book, The Island of Soda, its people, history and railway, Henry or Henry's were referred to as Henry 1 and 2. This led to the speculation that the Henry after the rebuild was another Henry totally. So did Stania just send another Henry? How are the voices saying? How does he remember everything then? Well, maybe it was just a misunderstanding then. Maybe Stanley just took the face and pasted it on a new design. Leaving that aside, after his rebuild, Henry taught some silly boys a lesson, missed pulling the royal train by only a bit, and he teased Percy a little about water, and then finally proved himself to be the engine who is known as today when after having a failed regulator he was able to pull two failed diesel with two heavy trains. Now that's what I would call character development. We see his heroic side here on how even though he didn't feel well he still gave it his best shot. Super Rescue for that reason is often hailed by many as the best story of the railway series. Henry was a pretty good character and had lots of development over the course of the book. His TV series counterpart is a little different than what you would think. Henry up to season 6 and even 7 was treated like how he was in the books. Heck, in the TV series we see that Henry was not just vain but also a little sensitive. Henry loved visiting the forest. After it was destroyed, he was devastated. He used to come there whenever he could get time. Because of how much he loves it, he helped to replant trees after it was destroyed by a storm. And you can just see how happy he is. I would definitely consider this one of the best episodes of the entire series. However, after that, he seemingly again began to have problems. Since season 7, he again seemingly started to fall sick again. He forgot how to pull coaches somehow. How old are you again? And somehow he needed special coal again. What? The thing that he has suffered from so much, he had to deal with it again? However, I will say the episode is good to be Gordon. Showed Henry using special coal, it was still good, as I can still imagine it fitting before Henry had his accident. But I still dislike the Henry needing Welsh coal thing again. Heck, they don't even refer it as Welsh coal, they refer to it as Henry special coal. I just don't see how did the writers come up with the idea of Henry using special coal again. He couldn't have started using a different firebox and you can't call them flashbacks either. Even as a child, I used to be confused on why Henry needed it again. However, after Brenner came on board, he put a stop to that. Don't tell me he needs special coal again. No, Gordon. That was fixed years ago. However, there were more problems. Since the Miller era, Henry has been treated as the worrisome engine. The one who is frightened of literally anything. And I think this really showed in episodes like Flatbeds of Fear and Henry Swart's Trouble. I think most people are very upset with this and believe me I was too. And as the adventure begins was coming along, people thought that they would finally see the vain, arrogant and misfortunate engine we had seen in the classic series. But to some surprise, he wasn't portrayed like that. He was again a little scared. He's scared of the actual raindrop. But if you actually think about it, Henry would be the character that people would see as the worried one. I mean, he has been worried in the past. Henry's forest and Henry and the elephant. But him being scared of raindrop is a little too much, even I would admit. But this did help in development of Thomas's character. If that Titmus chest scene would not have been there, then we could not have seen Thomas's caring side that we did see. So I would say it was a pretty good compromise. Plus, it is pretty hard to make Henry arrogant and not just a copy of James or Gordon. So, Henry has become that generic token worrisome character? Not exactly actually. It seems like the writers actually listened to the fans 
and they gave Henry a little bit of his old self. We get some of his old persona in season 20, it, in episodes like Henry in the Dark and Henry Gets the Express, and it finally felt like Henry's character would be complete. But then a certain yellow banana came along and replaced him. Really? After so much character development you have had with the character, you do this with him? So it seemed Mattel wanted people to forget Henry. Well, guess what? The total opposite happened. People were so big fans of him that even when he got small roles in the Big World Big Adventures era, people would still talk about it. So just imagine what Henry would have been like and how he would have ended up if he was not kicked out of Tidmouth Sheds. So, this is the journey on how Henry went from being a failure to nearly being scrapped and replaced to one of the best to one of the most messed up to again one of the best characters in the series and eventually got kicked out but nobody cares about that right? To this day lots of people have Henry as their most favorite character of all time and I can see why. Henry has been one of the most developed characters in the series. And I know the reboot will mess up Henry and probably not even include him. So let's remember Henry as he was in some episodes of the Brenner era, the classic series era and most importantly the railway series. <laughs>